Hello, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. Today we're going to continue working help desk tickets. This is specific training for people who are trying to get into help desk. It's going to be real world experience I'm going to share with you. And this is, I believe, sixth video in this series. So we're just going to keep it going and learn as much as possible so we can do these jobs and be successful at it. So let's become IT professionals together. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobu Man. Before we start, please do me a favor and in the comments below, just say hi, hello, or present. That way I know you're still interested in this type of stuff. Sort of like a, in the classroom, if you will. I really appreciate it. It keeps me motivated so much. All right, let's get into it. We're going to uh, start where we left off from the last time. And as you can see, we have a lot more tickets. Thank you all who submitted new tickets. So right now we got... 16 tickets in total that we need to work on we got 15 unassigned and one that's still assigned remember if you watched my last video this is something we have to follow up on and let's see uh, what happened with this because we were waiting for customer reply on this now just to mention if you're first time watching these videos these are real life help desk situations that i am teaching this is a real ticketing system and the issues are either created by me from experience or the issues are submitted by my viewers asking either for help for opinion or you know pretending to request assistance like as if they were customers but when it comes to the experience that i'm sharing or slash teaching is real okay all right so i uh, remember in this one it was an office 365 issue and then the description was not able to open my mailbox and we left off with a comment or a message sent to the customer it says hello this is Irvin with help desk if you have a if you I have your ticket about not able to open mailbox can you please send me a screenshot of the error and the reason I did this is because I wanted to see if there is any error uh, related to not op not not being able to open mailbox because I needed more in instructions in the sense of what is going on because the issue is simply not able to open my mailbox it could be many things it could be not connected to the VPN it could be not able to log in it could be no internet it could be all of these things that I don't know about unless I take control of the computer. In this case, I cannot take control of the computer because this was submitted uh, by one of the viewers. So for those reasons, I needed a screenshot. And the reason you always want a screenshot, if possible, because it gives you many, many clues of what the issue is. If there was no internet, it would say 404 error, or that actually usually means that the website page doesn't exist. Uh, the ne necessarily you know bad internet but it could also be simple error that says you know unable to log in wrong password or something like that but sometimes you do get odd errors that just looks like wall of text it looks like a tech techie mumbo jumbo right it looks like just bunch of stuff and we had an example of an error like that in the previous video which I highly suggest you also watch or any other videos in the series which was very technical looking but if you read it carefully you were able to figure out what the issue is so since we haven't uh, received any reply i'm just going to go and send one more reply to customer so you want to at least follow up twice depending on the company depending on the company you work for i personally follow up twice and i'm going to say hello do you still need assistance with this issue very important very important because you don't just want to close the this issue and not have any resolution to it but if you follow up at least twice in some cases they want you to follow up three times before you close the ticket then then um, you at least shown to your manager to your company to your employer that you've made extra effort so you want to look good you know however the help desk you work for may have different rules they may say if they don't respond with, within 24 hours you close the ticket i don't know this is something that you're going to have to ask your supervisor when you start working help desk you understand so <laughs> i mean that's just how it is 
I personally, and and I can do this typically because I at at the moment I work as a business systems analyst. So whenever I have time to work tickets, um, I you know I used to work help desk. Uh, so this is where the experience comes from. But I also work tickets in my free time as a business systems analyst, and I have more time to get a response because I usually work on system outages. You know, if it's like affecting uh, multiple uh, si uh, multiple users, if you will. But even if I pick up like a regular ticket like this, I will follow up twice because I have time. You know, if you're a help desk, you may not necessarily have time to do all of this. But this is just my rule. Again, double check with your supervisor slash manager. Team lead, I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, so since I want to make space in the mailbox, we're going to pretend that we waited another 24 hours for him to respond. I don't think he's going to respond because, you know, I sent this December 6th, which was 10 days ago now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close it just to make space so we can work other tickets. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. Again, double check with your supervisor how long and how many times you want to, how long you want to keep it the ticket open and how long you're allowed to keep the ticket open and how many times you are required to follow up okay so this is going to disappear now when i look on the unassigned issues uh, this is just what is going to be the the existing tickets that are unassigned and if i select assigned to me there's going to be nothing in there because that was the only ticket we were waiting for to complete all right we got a lot of tickets from D. Again, D, thank you so much for submitting these issues. Uh, we're going to, issues, questions, we'll see. And we're going to go through them um, as, as fast as we can. And I'm going to try to do as many as possible. This might be a little bit of a longer session, and it, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. And that way, you know, it's a good experience for you guys that don't have any experience or just want to kind of brush up on help desk tech stuff or just enjoy watching my videos okay so this one is outlook 2 2016 okay it says here how can i get my work email uh on my phone out mm, how can i get my work email on my phone out how can i maybe how can i work out my email on the phone so so outlook 2016 I'm not sure if this is backwards compatible. However, in Office 365, Office 365 has a phone app for your Android, for your Apple phone. You can install it on your phone and sign into your Office 365, which obviously has Outlook in it. Now, whether it's backwards compatible 2016, I am not sure uh, because 2016 came out before this, you know, app craze was more uh, prevalent in a business type of environment where they want to integrate everything. Not to say that there weren't any apps when it comes to this type of stuff. I'm just saying people or businesses didn't really rely on phones that much yet, but now they are. So a lot of things are done through the apps, like, for example, getting your uh, passcode for your VPN getting your uh, multi um, uh, what they call multi authentication uh, code so it's like a so you need a password and then you need to put in the code and that's how you sign in and that's why they use these apps for this is why phones are convenient because you know they're they're computers right we know that new especially newer newer phones they're so powerful and in some cases just as powerful as desktop computer or a laptop so I know that Office 365, which is the same product as this, as this Outlook. So give it a shot. I would install Office 365 app on your phone and use a Microsoft account to log in. Now, if it's an Outlook 2016 that your company is still hosting on their own server, meaning that this infrastructure is set up for an older system that doesn't use Office 365, which technically would be outdated system so maybe using 2016 outlook 2016 is not the best thing to do it still because you know it's it's fairly old now but if your company is still using microsoft products and they're paying for the licenses 
then they should have Office 365. And for those reasons, you can you can use Office 365 app. You log into it, then you can access all of the Microsoft products that are on there, including Outlook. So I'm going to reply to customer. And uh, well, first thing first, always assign a ticket to yourself so you can get credit for it. I'm going to say hello. And since I've already talked to D in a previous video, I don't have to tr introduce myself. D knows who I am. I'm going to say, hello, you can download an Office 365 app on your phone. Log in to it. And then you can access Outlook, including other office, let's say programs. I was going to say products, but I'm going to say programs because, you know, it maybe it's easier to understand uh, when I say programs. All right, let's see how this looks like. Always review before you send anything, especially if it's a business email. But in this case, it's just a ticketing system. So if you make a small, uh, you know, mistake, like a grammar mistake, it's not a huge deal, uh, but always try to be uh, correct. And when it comes to grammar, English is my second language language as well. So I make mistakes as well. It's, it's, it's been known to happen, even though I've been speaking English for, I don't know, 25 years of my life. Uh, but, you know, I haven't spoken 25 years of fluent English. So anyways, it's okay to check. <laughs> and um, let's see, what can we, well, what else can we do? Can you, you can download an Office 365 app on your phone, log into it, and then you can access Outlook, including other Office programs. Uh, let me know if any issues. So I know this is left open-ended and you don't want to leave anything open open-ended uh, when it comes to tickets you want to close them and just let it let them uh, be closed uh, but since i care that d since you know d submitted a lot of issues uh, i you know this is a regular customer right this is a regular customer so in this case if your help desk the company that you work for the help desk that you work for if they allow you to do this um, i suggest you do it because if it's a returning customer, this leaves a good impression. This leaves a good impression, especially if your help desk allows you to follow up, allows you to follow up with customers. So that way, you know, we can leave it open. In this case, I will close the ticket, but then again, if D comes back to me and contacts me directly, since I've already contacted her, we pretended that we contacted her in this case, because, you know, this is a training, training video. D can always reach me and say, Hey, I got this downloaded, but I don't know how to log in type of stuff, you know, then you can, you can help them. You can help the user, you can help the customer. And that way, if you need to get credit for it, you can create a ticket for yourself. You create a ticket uh, on the, on the customer's behalf, you know, because D submitted here like five or six tickets. Do we really want D, our customer, our user to keep submitting tickets for every little thing not necessarily uh, because in this case she you know he or she submitted already a bunch of these tickets uh, I'm, I'm sorry I don't know your gender so I apologize uh, but you know D submitted a bunch of tickets already so it's okay for us to create one ticket on, on their behalf so we can get credit for it if if they come back if they come back and say that that they need more assistance. Okay. So I'm going to set it as resolved. Okay. All right. Let's go to unassigned tickets. Laser printer from D. Okay. Assign ticket to myself. Laser printer at warehouse will not print shipping labels. Restarted printer and still does not work. So when it comes to printers, it's, you know, you would really need hands-on access to really, really troubleshoot if it's a physical issue. 
So if it's a physical issue. Now, in this case, if I had a phone number to talk to D, you know, I would call user and I would talk to them directly and access their their computer if they're trying to uh, if they're trying to um, install the printer. But in this case, it sounds like D has direct access to this laser printer, right? So you have two options have physical access to it, which as help desk, you do not, you know, unless you're help desk slash on site tech, then you can go to that printer directly yourself. And then, you know, test it, resolve the issue. So in this case, you'd have to talk, you have to talk and I suggest you talk to them on the phone because it's going to be a lot faster. Uh, you know, by sending messages back and forth, it'll take forever to troubleshoot this, it'll take forever. You know, but in this case, printer at the warehouse will not print shipping labels. So it's a printing, you know, it's a printer just used for shipping labels, or it could be a label per printer. We don't know, we need more information on this. Restarted printer uh, still does not work. A lot of times restarting computers will fix them. Uh, but when it comes to printers may not work. So typically when something is stuck, when a printer print spooler has a lot of uh, has a lot of queued up, queued up, uh, um, if it's computer related, it has a lots of queued up print jobs waiting, waiting to happen. And if there's something wrong with the printer, let's say something is stuck to it, or there is a bad connection, there's no direct connection to the printer, it may stop working and it will not do anything unless you clear the spooler. So let me show you spooler if you go to the services print spooler controls whether you can print or not and it also handles uh, print jobs uh, that are queued up meaning in line let's say I try to print something and it's gonna stand in line until printer goes you know when it tries to when it gets to a point when it gets ready to print you know so it, it takes time this is why it sits in the queue in the line waiting to be printed, but then you queue up another one because you thought maybe it didn't start because I haven't sent it and then, and then another one. But then again, you might have like five other people doing the same thing. Now, since this is a label printer, you know, I don't know. There could be one person working on the label printer at the warehouse, or I mean, it's a warehouse and they create a lot of labels. You might have 10 workers, 20 workers trying to print shipping labels. You know, this thing could be just going 24 seven, you know, we don't, we need to see, uh, we need to have physical access to it or have user tell you what they see, what is on the screen? What is there an error message? Is there a screen? What kind of printer is it? Is there a screen on it? At least, you know, some of the newer printers will have a screen on it and where you can manually put in any information or whatever it is, or send print job or access your uh, secure print jobs, all kinds of stuff. But there, nonetheless, there might be a screen on it that might give you error. What is the error? You know, it may not say what the actual issue is, but there might be an error code, an error code to ask you, uh, to tell you what the issue may be. So these are all things we need to find out. Just because this ticket is vague doesn't mean that we can't talk about possible solutions. So back to the print spooler. Here's a print spooler here. This is a service that runs in the background of your computer that handles the things that I've talked about, meaning print jobs, print jobs that are waiting to happen, waiting for printer to happen. So if they're stuck, this is something you might want to stop. You know, right now I don't have services open as admin, but if you right click it, you can select stop. Now it's grayed out because again, you need admin privileges to open up services. So every computer, or this is what I would do. Everybody that has a job waiting, you can either have them do this or have them reboot their computer as well. So you got many, many options here and many ways to troubleshoot this. So, but either way, we need more information and somebody with hands-on access to this printer. So you can stop this and then restart it or resume, restart, whatever it is that you need to do we need to make sure that we stop this printer spooler to clear its queue 
its line of documents being sent files if you will and then we need to get it back to the running state like it says here so stop and then start or restart or whatever it is that you have available whatever the situation you may find this to be broken you may have find this that this to be stopped you know but in this case you know it could be something physical wrong with that so these are uh, this is a great ticket for me to talk about of potential issues there might be more stuff there might be more stuff that i may have missed um, and, and if you guys have any opinions also leave them in the comments as well all right i'm going to reply and hopefully these watching this so i don't have to provide a lot of information uh, but you know because i would be i would i'm assuming that i am talking about talking to somebody on the phone you know I'm, I'm assuming in this case that i would be talking to d on the phone and repeat all of these things so hopefully d is watching and i'm going to pretend that that was our phone conversation so in this case without making it confusing i'm going to say d hopefully you're watching this and normally i would say please watch a video <laughs> you know like i leave you know uh, a reply to customer which sends a, a message to customer please watch my video for a possible solution right but i'm going to pretend that we had a conversation i'm going to say per our phone conversation per our co why am i not able to spell here we go conversation please check all of the things I've mentioned. If there are any screenshots, please refer to them for possible solution. Now, you know, it's it's a bit of an awkward ticket to leave a note on or leave a reply on leave a reply on and by the way i forgot to leave an internal note on the previous ticket that i've that i've uh closed but that's okay we're just going to keep moving uh that was my mistake but i we need to leave an inter internal note as well in in some cases uh, per our phone conversation please check all the things i've mentioned if there are any screenshots please refer to them for possible solution so again there are many many things that they could be wrong and we need to talk to the customer slash user um, to figure out what the issue may be and we need to try all of these things if we don't know what what the issue is so we have to try all of those things in order or in order whichever you want you know as long as we try all of these things again you know help desk help desk is tech support this is troubleshooting these are all things we need to do Irvin so I would you know you know if, if D is a regular customer uh, you know we can work this out and D can contact me again with more information so D uh, if you do have I'm going to close your ticket and I'm sorry for that uh, because I need to make space so the new tickets can come through so I can see them uh, but um, if, if you want to submit another ticket with the actual screenshot that would be perfectly fine uh, this is not something now this is just talking to you guys who are watching this is not something you want to tell customer or user to submit a new ticket for every little thing no no, no. you stick with the ticket until you fix it but i'm just telling d that you know to submit a, a screenshot or error or provide more details as much detail as possible about the issue so and and the things tried to fix it uh, so we can move on to other possibilities because this is a kind of a collaboration at this point between me and d who is one of my viewer viewers okay so i'm just going to leave it at that add internal note and then we're going to pretend like we've done all the troubleshooting performed i'm going to say various trouble shooting methods I'm sorry guys 
terrible at spelling today. I need to drink more coffee is what I need. Me performed various troubleshooting methods because there are way too many for me to list, uh, as I've mentioned already. Um, I would need more information from customer in order to resolve the issue. So customer user will not see this internal note. This is just for internal so that our manager can see it. So I'm going to close it. Again, we know why. I already mentioned this. Okay, moving on. Aha. So this is a this is a ticket that I've submitted on behalf of Mike Moser, which is a fictional fictional user. And it says, I am a knowledge worker and need help installing software from a shared drive. Now, this happens, you know, people who are knowledge workers, people who are knowledge workers are allowed to do some things. This is why they're labeled as knowledge workers. They get different type of, you typically, they get different OS, operating system, uh, with different permissions where they can do certain things. They don't necessarily have administrator privileges. They don't necessarily have uh, administrator privileges to install any software. So they need help. You know, there it says here, I'm a knowledge worker. I need help installing software from shared drive. Um, grammatically incorrect sentence from me should be from a shared drive. Uh, but Either way, we know what the issue is here. So when it comes to knowledge workers, we need, we can help them and we need to help them because they don't have administrator privileges, right? Even as help desk, you may not have administrator privileges. Just so you know, if you're like a tier two or tier three, you may have administrator privileges, or if you're on site tech, you will have administrator privileges. But if you're tier one, you may not have administrator privileges. So you got two options. You can send this ticket to tier two, you know, but I don't want you to do that uh, because I'm going to assume that you have administrative privileges so we can talk about this. Otherwise, it defeats the purpose of me creating this. So since I've talked to Mike Moser many, many times in, in our training, you know, he knows me and we're going to talk to him on the phone. We're going to take control of, of his computer. So I'm going to reply to customer and I'm going to say, may I, well, I'm going to say hello. Now, hello. May I take control of your computer so I can install software. Software needed, sure. And, uh, you know, I'm a bit informal with, with Mike because, uh, you know, I've talked to him. He's kind of my buddy now at this point, you know, fictional buddy. So instead of saying, hello, uh, my name is Irvin. I have a ticket about this and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just going to say, may I take control of your computer so I can install software needed? Because at this point, I already know his, you know, chances are, I already know his computer name, which is required to gain access to his computer or his computer IP address. And I have other ways of taking control of his computer. Here's an example again, and I bring this up uh, sometimes. Here's the type of software I can use to enter their host name, which is also known as a computer name and or IP address. So if his IP address is 192.168.1.1, whatever it is, I can select connect and take control of his computer, or I can send them an invite to join a remote session, which he can click on like a link. And then that link will allow me to take full control of his computer. All right. So I'm talking to my bike, my buddy, Mike, uh, to install software. Even if you're tier two or tier three or whatever, you still may need a permission to install software from a shared drive because most of the time, all the software is controlled by an automatic system that automatically installs everything on your computer. Everything that you see on your computer is installed automatically through some kind of a software management 
desktop management software that it's installed on your computer and that software installs other software so you just have one think of it like an app on your phone that installs other apps on your phone it i, I know it kind of sounds uh, silly but that's what it is so and the way you do that is based off subscriptions that means that mike's computer will have specific software subscriptions you know how you subscribe to something a newsletter a youtube channel by the way if you're not subscribed to my youtube channel uh, you might want to subscribe so that way you get updates from my youtube channel same way if mike's computer is subscribed to a specific channel meaning and, and they literally call this channel uh meaning channel for that software that he needs then if he's not subscribed to it he's not going to get this software that he wants he's not going to get this software so in this case uh, well you, you would need approval to subscribe his computer to the software because there are licensing issues right he makes sure there's a license available for him and this is a preferred way of installing you can sometimes knowledge workers use odd and not necessarily automatically installed software which for which you would install manually with your administrator privileges and the hint of it is that he wants it installed from a shared drive so it's something that him and probably some people in his group are using this can happen and again get a permission from your supervisor that you can install this software and then when you when you get a permission you install it most of the time you will be able to install it so here's uh, here's an example of what happened so i'm just going to execute this here here is an example of software that may need to be installed well hold on i'm going to cancel this here this is not what i want either way what you want to do first is go to the shared drive go to the shared drive uh whatever wherever it is find find that software so go inside of it so for example let's say it's in here and then and this is not a shared drive this is just a local drive but it doesn't matter but let's say the software is in on a shared drive somewhere you have access to it it could be anywhere so let's say this is this is the in this is the uh, software that he needs and it's here right and it's here i you can install directly you can install directly you can run it right click it you know run it as admin and install it you know run it as admin or as a different user to install it you know like this run as a different user which will allow you to put in your admin privileges if by the way this is a good tip if you right click something and it doesn't give you run as admin you can shift hold shift on your keyboard right click and then run as a different user which will give you an option to put your administrative privileges anyways back to this so here it is on a shared drive i personally do not like to install things from a shared drive because it can be slow and it could be take for it could take forever to you know decompress and or uncompress if you will decompress any files that are in here and then try to copy them over and then try to install them so you best thing to do and way faster more secure now, uh, in a sense, there's less chance of uh, not installing properly. You might want to copy it directly to users. And let's say this is Mike's documents. You can just paste it in here. When, and then wait for it to copy over. And, you know, you'll get that thing and it's going to be slow because it's probably going to be slow. I haven't seen a share drive that's fast, you know, because, I mean, we got thousands of people, you know, trying to access same shared drive it's going to be slow a lot chances are really high it doesn't matter that's the that the point what i'm making is you want to make a copy local copy in this case the best place to do it is in their documents in my opinion but you can you can put in the root of c if you want doesn't really matter but once you copy it over then you can install it without worrying too much so you'd you know right click it 
and this is already installed so I, you know it's telling me you know and it already has administrator privileges added to it but anyways we're going to pretend we're going to right click shift right click run as different user again you do this if you don't if you don't see run as admin and now you see how it's it's letting me put in my admin privileges so i'm just gonna you know if you have your admin login you type in whatever your login is admin login right and then type in your password whatever that is and then click ok and then you install it there you go that's how i would go about this one so i'm going to add internal note and say installed requested software save and I'm going to close the ticket all right so that's going to disappear okay all right webcam webcam is not working this is another ticket that I've created so in this case we're definitely um, well definitely gonna sign the ticket to ourselves first we're going to talk to the customer and I'm going to pretend like I don't know this customer. I'm going to say hello. This is Irvin with Help Desk. Uh, may I take control of your computer to fix webcam sure whatever however you feel comfortable saying this make sure that, that it's simple and understandable so so the issue is you know I can't use my my webcam in meetings so it could be webcam is disabled or simply uh, it, it disabled simply broken or the driver itself needs to be repaired or sometimes I've seen an issue where a Windows update breaks it or something like that in which case you definitely want to reinstall the webcam but you want to make sure that it's turned on sometimes the user can press a combination key on their laptop or just a one key they press it and it disables their webcam sometimes you get you know a new laptops will have a little slider physical slider on the webcam itself you slide it over and it blocks the webcam so you're uh, once you talk to them, you know, once you, you know, I would talk to them if possible. I like talking to people on, on the, on the phone, uh, but you can troubleshoot this without talking to them on the phone, uh, by, you know, logging into their computer. Once you get a response from them, um, to, to say, okay, you can say, thanks. Um, what is your computer name or IP address? So I can access your computer. Now there are ways. You there are ways. There's a database where you can look up somebody's computer, or their IP address, simply based off their name. You know, in my company that I work for, I don't need to even ask them. I can look all this up just by their name. I can see where they logged in last time. You guys may not have these tools when you work help desk, but I have a tool that lets me know where where and where from at which computer did this user log into at which time and all of that you know i have these tools and if you have them that's great you don't have to go through all of this you know um and then i'm going to send and we're pretending like we're doing a chat with them a reply to customer and if they say i don't know then you can just send them a link like i showed you before through for example daimer or you can start a meeting you can join a meeting that they've created matter of fact that might be the best way to troubleshoot this because it says here i can't use my webcam in meetings so start the meeting whether it's a zoom meeting whether it's a webex meeting skype i don't know i don't care it doesn't matter uh you know go in there take control of their computer while they're in the meeting uh you know and through that meeting you can take control of their computer too you can request access to take, take control of their desktop or you can do both you can start a meeting and then you can use, for example, like I use Dameware to access their computer or any other remote control tool. And then once inside, 
look at the basic settings for you know see if there's you know let's see do I have Webex installed on this computer well here's here's just the camera here's just the camera app and we can say that there's nothing there it says we can't find your camera and and that's fine because I know this computer doesn't have a camera installed that's clear cut you know it's just not working so you're gonna move on from here it's not like just a you know black screen but there's audio so you know you ask the you ask the customer well well what is exactly the problem and if they say well people can hear me but I you know they can't see me you know so it could be just disabled disabled uh, uh, disabled camera let me see here inside of the meeting itself uh, just a moment bear with me I'm gonna install zoom here real quick and show you an example of that because I don't want to leave you uh, just be like oh okay well what do I do because some people literally don't know who are watching my videos so if there is a meeting going on and they simply uh, they simply need the camera turned on once you go in you can turn on the camera see like this right here as you know it says start video and there's a red line through it well then you want to click it you know and it says here cannot start audio fail to start the video camera please select another video camera in settings you know this and that and we can check the cameras and we can see that there are no other cameras you know if we go to video settings we can also see that there are no no cameras so now you can move on to troubleshooting the camera itself okay so we're going we can close this leave meeting and we're done with this part until we can troubleshoot later to make sure that you know that it's working so now we have to hit hit up the, the device manager open up a device manager so if you know if you just right click the windows um, icon and then go to device manager make sure you run it as administrator because now i got this you know pop up it says you're not logged in as an administrator and then you can go in and look for you know media devices is it is it here no digital media devices i forget what it's called but it's one of these software sound biometric digital something hold on i'll plug in an actual i'll plug in an actual camera <laughs> that by the way that could be the issue too it could be camera not plugged in if it's just a desktop camera hold on bear with me i have a camera all right did you guys see how it came up under imaging devices imaging devices here it is hd pro webcam c920 which is actually a really good camera uh, to have for just things because it's HD full 1080p and all that anyways we can see there is a problem right there right and now the problem is gone because the driver itself updated automatically so now it's installed and it's working so if the issue was to plug it in then then you would simply plug it in you know now let me open this let me open zoom to make sure and at the same time if you needed to if you needed to uh, install the driver again make sure you run the device manager as administrator and then just right click the camera and select uh, you know update the driver or reinstall the driver we'll, we'll try that as well here in the meeting so if I start a new meeting here I'm gonna turn on the camera it's gonna be just looking on the outside I think through my uh, through my uh, basement window <laughs> through my no no through my office window <laughs> come on zoom now 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 zoom is zoom is not look at this zoom meeting is not responding great so every time something gets stuck like this you may not be able to close it when it's re not responding like this what i like to do is go to the task manager and just kill it from there come on zoom there it is it finally closed i think there we go new here we go so it's just looking at you know the camera is working now you can see that clearly and what it was trying to project you know because i'm remoted into this computer so my picture is not going to show up nicely here but you can see that my camera is now working it's just looking at through my basement a window door if you will so that is working and again the reason it's not coming up properly here because 
the remote computer I'm connected to is actually a Wi-Fi computer and remote desktop is not good at conveying video at all but you can see that it's working and uh, you can also double check you can double check with the user to make sure that it is working you see how it's kind of slowing down because my remote session is actually slow and this is type of stuff you may expect to see whenever you're troubleshooting this type of stuff and uh, I'm gonna go over there and just wave a little bit so you guys can see you see me waving okay all right so that is that and we're going to stop the video because you know I don't want to keep keep running it okay so that is fixed and I'm going to close all of that and let me just go back to the device manager here device manager imaging devices so if you right click it go to properties you can go to driver and then roll back or uninstall you can uninstall the device driver and let it install itself like we like it did when we plugged in the camera um, you can try to update the driver and see if there's a new one available but you can see that this one installed fairly new from march 27 2021 you can see that it installed so you can install reinstall the drivers and that would be basically the only thing left that you can do after that then it's physically broken you know but then again you know it could be a key stroke if it's like an embedded laptop type of camera that just sits on top of your screen they could be just the key that they need to press to turn it on that could also be the case you'd be surprised well you shouldn't be surprised i should say because that's what happens so I'm going to add internal note and I'm going to say fixed camera by installing it. I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't want to, uh, I'm going, I'm not going to make customer look bad because in this case they just needed to plug it in, you know, and you know, we're just going to say, you know, you won't always want to be respectful because you don't know who's reading this type of stuff. Well, you know, but there might be some higher ups there might be reading this stuff it could be a manager and you know he may not care too much but then you got these people who are higher ups who's got who got nothing better to do but to kind of go through things go through tickets and go through qas make sure you know just to find a, a small small issue that they could complain about because you know they may not have anything else to do you know they might want to look to cut somebody i don't know you know they might be looking to downsize and they might be looking to find anybody who makes a tiny mistake not to scare you guys but just to kind of cover yourself and be professional as much as you can okay close it close the ticket and how long has been going on i think this video is going on up to an almost 45 minutes to 50 minutes so i'm going to leave it at that and normally you don't want to leave any tickets especially that are that are old as as december 5th like these are on top uh but you know but because i i would be here sitting for uh probably another three hours to talk about all of this here which for those reasons i'm going to create three more videos at least another good reason to subscribe to my channel especially if you want to work type of these type of jobs um people who submitted tickets and helped me out thank you very much i promise i will get to all of these and if you want to submit any issues or have any questions or just need instructions on how to do this please submit a ticket as well there is a link to this system they will come to me these are tickets for my system it's not my company's system or anything like that jira this is the name of this ticketing system is called jira and a lot of companies use it so it's not my company or anything but this is a ticketing system that's used by some companies and ticketing systems are very similar in in those same ways but i decided to kind of use this as a learning tool or teaching tool 
uh, for people who are watching. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you learned something from me. And if you're applying for these jobs, I wish you best of luck. And uh, yeah, you know, just be relaxed. When you get a, when you get those interviews, you know, just go over this type of stuff. Learn as much as you can. And then you've got nothing to worry about. Whenever they interview you, they'll know that you have this type of experience and this is a real type of experience that I'm showing you. Okay, have a wonderful day. Sorry. <laughs> I, I keep just talking too much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.